everything happy gudi padava it was yesterday and happy ugadi for our it is a telugu new year day yesterday it was there and happy chatti chan so after coming out from the festival wishes now my topic is on hiv aids which is evidence based cure with homeopathy my first dedication goes to dr samuel haniman and my sincere thanks for giving me the this platform today from dr shashimohan sharma and about hiv aids a slight redefinition as homeopathy induced vital force and as you everyone know acquired immunodeficiency syndrome is a chronic potentially life threatening condition caused by the immune human immunodeficiency virus so how many how many of the doctors are you sure that you can treat hiv cases yeah that's good but what about other people it's not that something threatening hiv means so oh, don't get scared that we can't it is curable only with homeopathy a just brief introduction about hiv it is a sexually transmitted infection it can also be spread by contact with infected blood or from mother to child during pregnancy childbirth or breastfeeding it can take years before hiv weakens your immune system to the point that you have aids immune The human immune deficiency syndrome was first recognized in 1981. This I'm just going with a brief history about, as everyone of you are aware, still a small pressure plaza caused by HIV-1 and HIV-2 viruses. These viruses have originated from primate viruses, simian immune deficiency virus. Sequence analysis has led to an estimate that HIV-1 was introduced to humans in early 1930s. but since 1980s it has become the second most leading cause of death worldwide and the most leading cause of death in africa which is more than 20% of death the symptoms of hiv and aids vary depending on the phase of infection primary infection the majority of people in infected by hiv one hiv develop a flu like illness within a month or two after the virus enters the body these illness known as primary or acute hiv infection which may last for a few weeks possible signs and symptoms include generally fever headache muscle aches rash chills sore throat joint pains diarrhea night sweats ulcers mouth or genital swollen lymph glands mainly on the neck most of here the symptoms which we might like with either it is a tuberculosis sometimes we it misleads to diagnosis like although the symptoms of primary hiv infection may be mild enough to go unnoticed the amount of virus in the blood stream viral load is particularly high at this time as a result hiv1 infection spreads more efficiently during primary infection than during the next stage of infection clinical latent infection in some people persistent swelling of lymph nodes occurs during clinical latent hiv otherwise there are no specific signs and symptoms hiv remains in the body however and in infected white blood cells clinical latent infection typically last 8 to 10 years a few people stay in this stage even longer but others progress to more severe disease much sooner early symptomatic hiv infection as the virus continues to multiply and destroy immune cells it may develop mild infections of chronic signs and symptoms which are such as like fever fatigue diarrhea weight loss cough shorten shortness of breath swollen lymph gland lymph nodes often one of the first signs just be aware that just check for lymph node enlargement progression to aids if you receive no treatment for your hiv infection the disease 
typically progress to AIDS in about 10 years. By the time AIDS develops, your immune system has been severely damaged, making you susceptible to opportunistic infections. Disease that won't trouble a person with a healthy immune system. A history. In the year 2000, it was estimated that approximately 36 million people were living with HIV AIDS. 5.3 million new cases and 3 million deaths took place. 95% of the deaths were in sub-Saharan Africa. Spread of infection continues in an alarmingly high rate and is rapidly increasing in thickly populated areas such as Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Russia, Latvia, in Southeast Asia, Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar. In India, it is estimated that 4 million people are infected. Now, it has, I might, this is the past analysis. I think it has crossed more than that. In North America and Europe, it's mainly seen in homosexual persons. HIV virus is a single-stranded RNA virus from the lentivirus family. Following mucosal exposure in transported to lymph nodes via dendrites, CD4 or Langerhans cells, where the infection gets established. Then the virus either freely or associated with the cells get disseminated widely through the blood with shedding, breeding of sanctuaries in the CNS, spleen, testes, intestinal mucosal, lymphoid tissue and the latent CD4 reservoirs. As time passes, there is a gradual Attrition of the CD4 cell population resulting in increased impairment of cell-mediated immunity with consequent susceptibility to opportunistic infections. The immune deficiency is a result of continuous high-level HIV replication leading to destruction of the key, key immune effector cells, CD4 lymphocytes. A classification of subtypes of viruses on the basis of DNA sequencing HIV-1 virus can be classified into three subtypes based on the distribution pattern. Group M, major worldwide distribution. Group O, outlier restricted to only Western Africa. Group N, rare and highly divergent. Pathophysiology, as the CD4 cells is pivotal in initiating and orchestrating immune response and any depletion in their numbers renders the body susceptible to opportunistic infections and oncogenic virus related tumors. Predominant infections, the course and progress of the disease depends upon the rate of CD4 destruction and the presence of virus. In high grade cases, it presents as an acute infection and present with progressive generalization, generalized lymphoadenopathy and recurrent vaginal candidiasis. In moderate grade cases, it may present with a variety of secondary infections such as tuberculosis, herpes zoster, oropharyngeal candidiasis, oral hairy leuco leucoplakia, salmonellosis, Kaposi sarcoma, etc. General tests for complications, doctors might also order to, for lab tests to check for other infections or complications which are including like tuberculosis, hepatitis, toxoplasmosis, sexual transmitted infections, liver or kidney damage, urinary tract infections. Here miasmatic approach. The persons affected are in syphilitic phase due to large scale destruction of the immune mediator cells. As it progress with the growth of oncogenic tumors, it may lead towards psychotic miasms. In patients with tubercular affection, the predominant miasm is tubercular. So we can see a mixed miasmatic picture in most of the advanced cases here, especially in advanced cases. Here just about the cases, in one of the cases, which I am going to show it as with the evidence that HIV is curable. A female age of 38 years, she is a daily wage worker. Her husband is a watchman with a HIV positive, having one daughter and son. So from him, it got transmitted to her. See, most of the cases you can find with middle, not only middle, low middle, and you can go for as class four people, because they are not keen about any hygienic. 
chief complaints here were weakness and she came with body pains fever with chills throat burning burning urination sleepless knee joint pains back ache hotness of body shortness of breath skin itching all over body which is which we see a routine type of symptoms in our general practice where you can't go up to the level of hiv thinking about it generally we go with as a palliative treatment here and that too with such type of great for i think most of the people we don't concentrate most of the thing over there so headache she was having left sided nausea at sight of food left side of body numbness left shoulder pain and crawling sensation all over the body eyes burning with di with discharges she had loose stools of history with body with pain abdomen and joint pains and back ache here thermals it was showing as chilly and she was thirsty yeah, i have taken the mentals the main thing the expression what she was telling about the fear the fear of death maybe i may not live for long i don't want to die now and fear of her disease getting transmitted to her children due to this fear so she was staying alone from the family and that was showing the anxiety about health and restlessness and she used to come early in the morning before i used to open my, my clinic when she misses her turn late she used to wait till last patient request for good medicine as all her reports were systematically maintained here generally the entry points it's just very simple like that there is no need for any repertorization i have taken the anxiety of health fear of Im impending disease and burning in all aspects and fear of death here the myasm i have taken it as syphilis these are the reports when i suspected with all the history and everything so the reports you can see this is on 7th 7th july okay hiv i have gone for western blot everything was detected so with that i came to confirmation that she is suffering with it so started with the treatment cd4 count was showing 6.51 which it has to be between 20 to 45 absolute leukocyte count 2700 total leukocyte count was 11400 and absolute cd4 plus t helper cells was 176 it is just like hopeless most of people even their relation she they said she is going to die so they left her also so this is on 28 9 i've taken up with my few rubrics i start i gave my medicine it is a single dose 2011 all it came as negative again i repeated the test in 2012 because she was having as a uh, other symptoms like knee joint pains were there fever on and off she used to have cold throat other mild symptoms were actually continuing so i told her to keep on continuing the treatment even here it was showing totally 12 and again 2014 everything came negative so i check even the cd4 count she was not on any allopathic medicine here you can see the difference CD4 43.7 absolute leukocyte count 2368 CD4 and T helper cells came to 1035 which was absolutely normal nothing was it. no one can say that she is still suffering with her child just i would like to show the previous just check it 6.5 this is the difference dear friends this this is possible only with homeopathy 
And here, another, another problem here is retaining a HIV patient with us to continue the treatment is a very difficult task. I have taken five cases, which, which was on totally on my cost and everything. I said, all the, for your investigations and the medicines will be given by me. Only thing I require is your follow-up. You come regularly. So that's why I was able to maintain and I, I, I got the evidence which, so that I can show everyone, so everyone can feel that they, there's no need to get afraid. Oh, HIV, no, no, I think it is very difficult. Nothing be clear from your mind and there is nothing like that you have to, oh, go for a repertorization. HIV means there will be so many symptoms, go for mental, all these things, nothing. Even a simple case, this is the only example I wanted to show is a simple case where we just mislead, we get misled with simple symptoms. Just take the investigation which has helped me that to diagnose that she is a HIV. And with simple rubrics, there is no need for any repatriation. Okay, what uh, doctor also said, homeopathy, not only the drugs can cure, but principles. Here, even you should have your metamedical knowledge about the drugs. And simple rubrics which help to lead to the medicine. Again, in 2000, recently, just in January, before, once I got that I'm going to come to the seminar, I thought, once again, I'll check once I, about her investigation reports, which were showing totally negative. I think everyone know what about it, about the remedy. Simple case of arsenical. No rare medicines, no something where you have to go through metamedica, search for the symptom, some keynote symptom, nothing. So it was arsenical 200, a single dose was given, followed by satellite for months, fever on and off, diarrhea, burning, where just repeating. So again, after some three, four months, I had to repeat arsenical 1M, relate, that was once in a month, I gave it for five months. This is the, the patient. Before, her skin was very shabby, very untidy and everything. After the treatment, you can see the even skin texture, shine and everything also. She was looking a healthy look. So here, my sincere thanks to my family for giving the support to Dr. Harsha, my assistant, who supported me throughout this case, my HIV patient who followed my course regularly too, and to my staff and respected homeopaths for your patience in hearing my case. And here, it, this is not the end of the research. Here now I have joined with a joint venture. It's not a joint venture. I have taken an organization in which they are treating only HIV cases, in which 22 HIV cases are there. Now we have started with homeopathy. They are actually totally on allopathy. They, after showing my case and my reports, they then they agreed and approved to give even homeopathy now. So with this, we want to show the wonders of homeopathy. And another latest information that in Hyderabad with uh, CCMB, Center for Cellular Microbiology, they have started research with Ayush Department of Hyderabad, where HIV cases with uh, No, no, I think it is from Ophidia Group. Right, thank you. It is Crotalus horridus. With that, they have done research on 3,000 patients, and most of around five to 600 cases we have come negative. They have got very good results with Ophidia Group. That's all. So I think you can even try. It's not that only. It is their research, but our homeopathic research is is on totality. We have to see even other factors also. So, my inspirator, Dr. Prakul Vijay sir, this is my, I give my thanks to the college, as awarded with PG Home in London. This is the team at the Royal Society of Medicine. I feel very lucky to give my seminar. First time, a homeopathy person, homeopathy doctors were given a chance to give in the Royal Society of Medicine in London. 
and this is in International Homeopathy Conference in Goa, 2014, where I received gold medal for breath presentation from Dr. Wahi and Dr. Dua, Shiva Dua, sir. And this is in University of West London in October 15. And I got the best thesis award over there. And in fellowship from homeopathy, I have done my fellowship where I ranked first. And for my best presentation over there also. And this is Charles Tankard Honeyman. Most of the people you may know. He is the seventh generation of Samuel Honeyman. And with this, HIV means here again a, a slight redefinition. Homeopathy, I and we all together can cure AIDS or any other disease. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you for you, adhering you. to time. Thank, thank you. you. I now take pleasure in inviting Dr. Islam Hamid from uh, Karachi. Uh, over a number of years, he's been working with the Karachi Chamber of Commerce and Industry, no, provincial and federal governments of Pakistan. He's also served as the focal person in several research work surveys in human, repose, human resource department to help provincial and federal governments of Pakistan. And uh, he's also part of the founding board member in the establishing Sindh Technical Education and Vocational Training Authority. And uh, he's played a vital role in including the, the homeopaths and hakims in the population welfare programs of Pakistan with positive results. Uh, he has more than 30 years of experience in health sector, especially in homeopathic medical science. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Some more information about Dr. Islam Amid I would like to give. <clears throat> His relationship with us are much before you, even he or I was born. In the sense that his grandfather, he was from Delhi 6, walled city of Delhi. And whenever he is in India, whenever he is coming to Delhi, he never misses a chance to visit us. So that bond is very, very old. And the moment I discussed with him that uh, Islam, this is the decision and uh, we would appreciate. First he said, my elder brother, he's your younger brother. My elder brother. My elder brother, he's in Lahore and he's a very good speaker. They said, okay, now it is your responsibility to send him. But finally then I think he had to go to US and he said, well, he's not coming and I'm coming. I said, still we are more happy. What is more important is that uh, I think just now, I, whether the team from uh, from, from, from Pakistan, from Chakwal, you know, they have come. Are you standing there? Where are you? Yes. There are... There are five, all in one family. And as soon as they learnt, I know okay, how difficult is any... Uh, getting a visa is how difficult for them. But anyhow, I think it was our a mission which could help, although they could have reached here early in the morning yesterday, but again because of the bureaucratic angles, although from India we were able to still, you know, get the things done earlier. But anyhow, we are happy that they have come and above all, Dr. Islam and the team, they have offered that they have said, okay, well, we will like to open a Pakistan chapter of the Inter International Opetic Foundation and said, okay, we will okay, well, we work out all the modalities and we will like to have the international conference there as soon as it is practicable. Thanks a lot. Most Thank welcome, you. sir. A good afternoon to all the guests gathering. आप लोगों का प्यार से भरा इनविटेशन आया तो हम कैसे नहीं आ सकते थे तो और
especially is uh, uh, on this occasion to prepare this presentation. Uh, I thanks to Dr. Rahi Saab, my elder brother Salim Hamid Saab, our ministry, health ministry, and National Council for Homeopathy Pakistan. They helped me a lot to give me some figures to make this presentation more attractive for you people. Today's topic is population explosion, its effect, and the role of homeopath. I was involved with Ministry of Population Welfare in Pakistan. I am convener for health and social sector since from uh, 2007, 8, 9, 10. Later on, uh, there is a change uh, after 18 amendment that devolved that ministry and it came to uh, provincial ministries. So I have been very much involved in this area with Ministry of Population, Federal Government, Provincial Government, World Bank, ILO, UNFPA, and I learned a lot of, from them. Population dynamics, it is, and trends play an influential role in the development and policy decision of a country, population size, structure, impact, country economy, as well the ability to provide social protections and access to health care, education, housing, sanitation, water, food, and energy. The population growth is one of the main key performance indicator that have a strong effect on country performance in achieving economics development. Millennium, millennium do, development goals target, especially in high population growth, only put a country economic resources under stress, but also increase dependency ratio of young people and thereby constrain the productivity growth in the economy. The achieving MDGS would require more efforts and resource when the population is growing at a higher rate. You can see it in 1950 and 2040 in billions, our population of the world. Future world population growth rate, you can also see it. This is very important demographic indicators of Pakistan in India. In Pakistan, 2015 population, it is 191.71, whereas Indian, it is 186.95 million. Urban population, it is 120, uh, Sorry, urban population is 75.19 million, whereas India is 411.84. Rural population, it is 116.52, 875.11 is India. Total fertility rate is 3.2 in Pakistan, whereas Indian is 2.48. Crude birth rate per 1,000 is 26.1, 19.81 is India. Crude death rate is 6.8, whereas in, in India it's 7.28. Population growth rate 1.92% Pakistan and 1.22 India. Female in Pakistan it is 67.3, whereas in India it's 60.1. Life expectancy year, 68.1. Males is 65.2, 64.3. These figures I received from uh, Ministry of uh, Planning, Development, Reforms, Population Projection for the year 2007 and 2030 in Pakistan. Health system in Pakistan in India. The system consists of public and private sectors. The private health care sector has developed considerably 
and has spread across the country and provide a varying level of care and public health sector needs to play a vital role in address to health issues. In both countries, health facilities are comprised of mixed publicly financed health delivery with privately financed market delivery. The public health care system comprises health workforce and physical infrastructure, equipment, supplies, and host of health activities. This is very important. Health facilities, facilities in Pakistan and India. For India, I thanks uh, Dr. Rai, Dr. Wahi Saab, who have sent me the details. This registered allopathic doctors in Pakistan until December 2015, it's 1,75,223, whereas in India, it is 9,40,000. Registered homeopathy doctor in Pakistan, it is 1,49,223. Whereas in, sorry, in Pakistan, whereas in India it is 2,24,079. Registered Hakim, Avarveda and others in Pakistan are 41,936. In India it is 5,12,721. Registered dentists, 15,104 in Pakistan, 1,54,000 in India. Population per doctor, 1,073 in, it is allopathy, 1,073 in Pakistan, 1,370 in India. Population per bed, it is 1,593 in Pakistan, whereas in India is 1,000. 833. Communicable diseases, HIV, AIDS, influenza, polio, malaria, tuberculosis, and hepatitis. Expanding programs of immunization. Homeopathy mode of treatment plays an active role in most of the communicable diseases for prevention and cure. In influenza, we have wonderful remedy like influenzinum, propolis, echinacea, eupatorium perf. In malaria, we have malaria of China marsh, China salicrotalis horridos, papaya. In tuberculosis, we have tuberculinium buvinium, tuberculinium coach, phosphorus, arsenicum album, drosra spongia. And in hepatitis, we have a cardius, cinerera scolomosis, hepatica, hepatica leptandra, netrum salt. I would like to share uh, regarding propolis. Propolis, it is very effective remedy in influenza and upper respiratory tract. If you, if you use mother tinctures until up to eighth C potency, you will get very good results. At the same time, it is very effective also on Streptococcus aureus. EPI programs provide immunization to children against the seven vaccine preventable diseases under one year of age, childhood, tuberculosis, polymyethitis, diphtheria, pertussis, neonatal tetanus, measles, and hepatitis B. New vaccine like pentavalent vaccine have been introduced with the help of UNSF, the World Bank, and other donor agencies working in Pakistan and India. So how we can help them? In Pakistan, when they give me a title of convener, I have started involve homeopath, Avarveda, and He Hakim in these programs. So unbelievable. You cannot imagine when Ministry of Population, they arrange seminars only. 50 or 100 people attend these seminars. Whereas when I involve with them, with homeopath doctors, Hakims, the seminars, you know what happens? 1,700 people attended. This is our success. HIV, HIV AIDS, already we have uh, discussed uh, with one of our uh, colleagues. They have uh, informed several things. India has the third highest number of people living with HIV 
एच आई वी इन द वर्ल्ड विद टू पॉइंट वन मिलियन पाकिस्तान स्टिल हैव द प्रीवेलेंस ऑफ एच आई वी